Good morning. It's Sunday morning, we're still looking at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Let's just read them again, just so we have that context for ourselves again. Praise be to the God and the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace, which he's lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This morning we want to just contemplate verse 11 and 12 and 13. In him you were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Paul is telling us that God has a plan. And I like that. He says, you were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. So his predestination or predetermination of our destination has been a thought that began before the creation of the world. Think of what we read way at the beginning how God, before the creation of the world, planned that we should be holy and blameless in his sight through Jesus Christ. Everything has to do with Jesus. The whole concept of predestination or predetermination has to do with God's plan for us. And we need to look at some of the other places again just to reiterate that for ourselves. Think of Romans, the eighth chapter, where Paul basically says this in verse 28 through 30. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also pre predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. I know for many, the whole idea of predestined seems to be that God has determined beforehand all of these things. But what I'm reading is, is that what he's determined beforehand 
is, is that we should be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. God's plan is that those who receive him, those who receive Jesus Christ, and that's what the next verse in Ephesians says, we were the first to put our hope in Christ. The whole concept of putting our hope in Christ has to do with me having choice, choosing to do so. God didn't tap me on the shoulder and say, you and not you. No. Those who receive the word of truth. Romans 10 helps us to determine that a little better. And I think that it's good for us to allow Scripture to speak to us about what God is, is saying to us. Think of this. I'm going to read a fairly long passage here in Romans 10, talking about righteousness. I'm going to start at verse 6. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Well, what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Anyone who believes in him. And there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and riches, richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved but the name Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation and the cornerstone of our faith. He is the key to what God wants to do in us. How then can we call on the one they have not believed in? How can they call? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But it's not Israel who accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report, consequently faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I asked, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Again, I asked, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I'll make you envious, envious by those who are not a nation. I'll make you angry by a nation that does not understand. And Isaiah boldly says, I, have, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long, I held out my hands to a disobedient and an obstinate people. They had a choice. God had predestined before the creation of the world that we should be included in Christ when we believed. God's plan in eternity is that Jesus should be the first of the brethren, that Jesus should be the first of the new creation, and that in him and through him and by him, all things and all individuals will live and move and have their being. 
Think of what Paul re- writes again in verse 13 of first of Ephesians 1. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So you were included when you heard the message. Why? Because you received the message, you accepted the message, you allowed that message entrance into your heart and into your life. You made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Joshua said something rather interesting toward the end of his day. He said to Israel, this day choose you whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will choose to serve God. And the people turned around and they said, we too will serve God. So they chose to do it. But that choice that they made has consequence to it. They became a new creation in Christ Jesus. For as many as believe in him, to them he gave the right to be called the children of God. That is what they are. More not again of a human decision or human will, but born of God. We are born of God. We have become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's God's plan. That's God's will. That's God's predetermination is that you and I, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, should become one with Jesus. And so then we have an inheritance because we are now part of the family of God. We have been adapted into this family. Think of the other portion of scripture that Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, that we are adapted as sons and daughters for the singular purpose that we should be together in eternity. That's God's desire for us, that we should be one together. What a plan. What a mission that God is on. But what it also says to you, me is that my obligation then to the rest of the world is I need to share that message for how can they believe if they don't hear? Hear the word of Christ, to tell them the good news that God wants to forgive them of their sin and receive them into his kingdom, that they would become a new creation in Christ Jesus so that the old would pass away and behold, all things would become new. God's predetermination is a path towards eternity together with him. That's God's predetermination. Predestination. It's exactly what it says. Predestination. Our destination is heaven together with Christ. And that's why in the previous verse, it talks about that God will bring all things together. And the culmination of the times that are yet to happen when he brings all things together and the bride of Christ is called into the presence of God and the old and the new are brought into one in the presence of God. And we together will be that bride of Christ in the heavenly places. What an awesome experience that we still have awaiting us. Thank God that God's will for us is for a future and a hope. A future and a hope. 
founded in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your love and your goodness towards us. Help us, Lord, to rejoice in the hope of eternity and for all that you've done for us through Christ our Lord. Amen.